Hi, John McElroy here, talking all things automotive, and today we've got to talk about government regulations of the automotive industry. And I say that because the U.S. government has been writing regulations for the auto industry for 50 years, and I think it's time to step back and assess if there's a better way of doing it. That's because the auto industry is tangled up in red tape thanks to a hodgepodge of policies enacted by Congress that, while well done with the best of intentions, have created a bureaucratic quagmire. I believe we can regulate the auto industry a lot more efficiently without sacrificing emission standards, fuel efficiency, or vehicle safety. Here's the problem. Congress created all these agencies over time with no overall plan on how to regulate the auto industry. Congress created NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in 1970 to establish automotive safety standards. Then it wrote the Clean Air Act of 1970, which mandated that the EPA set emission standards for cars. And in 1975, Congress created the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Act, CAFE, which specified that the Department of Transportation had to set specific MPG standards for cars and trucks. But what made sense in the 1970s doesn't make sense today. For example, the EPA's original mandate for cars was to reduce the criteria emissions that cause smog, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and nitrous oxides. Today, the auto industry has eliminated 99% of those emissions, a remarkable achievement. So now the EPA has turned its attention to reducing CO2 emissions. But the only way that you can cut CO2 emissions is by adopting technology that uses less gasoline or diesel fuel. And that, in turn, boosts fuel economy. And yet, while the EPA CO2 regulations are forcing automakers to boost fuel economy, NHTSA has a totally separate set of CAFE regulations that do the exact same thing. So the EPA and NHTSA are working on achieving the same goal, but with different sets of regulations. And they don't match up. So automakers have to go through all kinds of red tape from different agencies to essentially do the same thing. Meanwhile, NHTSA also writes safety regulations that add more structure and electronic components to cars, which makes them heavier, which means they burn more fuel, and that means they put out more emissions. Now, you'd think that it would make sense to coordinate how this all rulemaking takes place, but that's not how the system works. And you can't blame the agencies. They're merely doing what Congress mandated them to do. So it's up to Congress to fix this problem. Here's one suggestion. Why not get rid of NHTSA's CAFE rules and simply rely on the EPA's emission standards? The end result would be about the same, but it would get rid of thousands of pages of regulations and all the time and money needed to meet them. I also think it's time to rethink our approach to automotive safety regulations. In the last decade, NHTSA has mandated that cars be equipped with electronic stability control and backup cameras and forward collision warning and automated emergency braking. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the IIHS, which has enormous influence on setting safety standards, recommends that all cars be equipped with blind spot detection and lane departure warning systems. And yet, while automakers have dutifully added all this equipment to their cars, the number of motor vehicle fatalities in the United States is 30% higher than it was a decade ago. Even when you take population growth, the greater number of vehicles on the road, and the larger number of miles driven into account, the fatality rate today is almost 20% higher than before all that safety equipment was added. I'm not saying that this equipment should be deleted, but it's clear that doing more of the same is not going to reduce traffic fatalities. And yet, NHTSA wants to make seatbelt reminders even more annoying than they are right now. And the IIHS wants greater safety for rear seat passengers. Sorry, I don't think that's gonna make any difference. And while distracted drivers are a big problem, the data doesn't support that this is the main reason for the increase. Something else is going on that none of the safety technology addresses. One technology I've argued for before is the adoption of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, where cars can talk to each other. 
V to V can make it almost impossible for cars to crash into each other. And it can be linked to smartphones to protect pedestrians too. The technology is on the shelf. It's proven. It's cheaper. And I believe it'll prove to be more effective than all the safety technology on today's cars. You know, we came really close to getting V to V mandated in 2017, but then all the wind went out of the sails. I think it's time to push for it again. Earlier this year, the Department of Transportation issued a roadmap for a national V to V deployment plan, but it's an unbinding plan. So it's time for Congress to pick up the ball and get this thing mandated. But it's also time for Congress to rethink the entire approach to regulating the auto industry. Instead of different agencies writing rules that duplicate what's being done or even conflict with each other, why not have one office of automotive regulation? That office could issue regulations that are stable, predictable, and come out in a cadence that the industry can efficiently digest. Here's my bottom line. We can get cars that are safer, cleaner, and more efficient with a lot less red tape and bureaucracy. I don't really care how it gets done, but it's pretty obvious that the way we're doing it now is unnecessarily complicated.